My name is Maria, and let me tell you, fairy tales have a way of convincing you that life is simpler than it is. Happily ever after, they promise. But what happens when ever after turns out to be a labyrinth of secrets and betrayals? I found out the hard way. I met Alex at a mutual friend's party. He was charming, well-spoken, and had this aura of confidence that I found irresistible. Hi, I'm Alex, he had said, stretching out his hand. You look like you could use a drink. And what makes you say that? I had countered, intrigued, but cautious. The way you're eyeing the punch bowl, he'd replied with a wink. That was the beginning. Dates turned into months, months into years. And before I knew it, I was standing at the altar saying I do to the man I thought I'd spend the rest of my life with. Our wedding was a seamless blend of laughter, joy, and celebrations. There was, however, one discordant note. Karen, Alex's mother. You know how mothers-in-law are often portrayed as difficult in stories and movies? Well, Karen was the epitome of that stereotype, but I had always thought it was something we could work on. After all, I was marrying Alex, not his family. A mother knows best, Maria, she had said ominously at our wedding, her eyes scrutinizing me from head to toe. You'll do well to remember that. Confused but not wanting to ruin the special day, I had smiled politely. I hoped to learn from the best then. She had let out a dry laugh. We'll see about that. Alex was well aware of the tension, but he brushed it off. Protective or controlling, I had asked him once, unable to hide my concern. He had taken my hand in his, kissing it gently. Don't worry about it. You and I, it's like a fairy tale, isn't it? Mom will come around. You'll see. So, I dismissed the red flags. I pushed aside my reservations about Karen and focused on our life together. We moved into a cozy home in the suburbs, furnished it with care, and shared our days and nights in blissful companionship. We're building something beautiful here, Alex. I would often say as we sat on our patio, watching the sun dip below the horizon. And it's just the beginning, my love, he would reply, wrapping an arm around me. There's so much more to come. How perfect it all seemed. I was the envied wife of a loving husband living in domestic paradise. The jigsaw of my life was complete, or so I thought. In reality, the picture was far from finished. A crucial piece was missing, a piece that would turn my world upside down. I couldn't see it then, but the signs were there, hidden in bank accounts and veiled in sweet nothings. A betrayal was brewing, one that would shatter my fairy tale into a million pieces. If only I had known that the beautiful lie was just that. A lie, and like all lies, it would eventually unravel, showing its ugly truth. But as they say hindsight is twenty-twenty. At that time I was living my dream, oblivious to the nightmare that awaited me. Life has a way of testing the strongest of bonds. My test arrived when my father passed away. It was sudden unexpected, and it hit me like a freight train. My dad had always been there for me, a steady pillar of strength and wisdom, and now he was gone, leaving an unfillable void in my life. Amid the haze of grief, a glimmer of respite came in the form of his will. I had inherited one million dollars, a small fortune that he had amassed through years of hard work and smart investments. Despite the emotional turmoil, I felt a sense of responsibility to handle this windfall wisely. It could be a safety net, a financial cushion that would provide Alex and me a certain level of comfort and security. So, I did what seemed logical at the time. I transferred the money to our joint bank account. Alex, who was temporarily out of work, seemed pleased, if not a bit too nonchalant about the sudden influx of cash. That's a lot of money, he had said casually when I told him about the transfer. It is. I had replied, and we should think carefully about how to use it. Of course, babe. My mother's pretty good with finances. Maybe we should consult her, he'd suggested. Though the idea had unnerved me, given Karen's less than friendly attitude toward me. I had considered it. 
After all, a million dollars was not something to be taken lightly. Maybe I had responded, letting the matter drop for the time being. Exactly one week later, the ground beneath me crumbled. I was sipping my morning coffee when I decided to check our bank account via the mobile app. My eyes widened in disbelief as I stared at the screen. Our balance was zero, not low, not diminished, completely empty. I felt a lump forming in my throat. It was like being thrown into freezing water, your breath seizing up, mind spinning in confusion and panic. I immediately called the bank, my fingers trembling as I dialed the customer service number. Can you confirm the last major transaction on this account? I stammered, praying it was some technical glitch, a temporary error that would be rectified. Mom, it appears that a transfer was made to Karen Smith's account, the voice on the other end said, referencing my mother-in-law by name. What? Why? How? My words came out in a jumbled rush. The authorization came from your joint account, so it's considered a legal transaction, the representative explained, coldly factual and distressingly detached. My blood boiled, my heart raced, and my head pounded with a mix of rage and betrayal. I hung up the phone, my hands shaking uncontrollably. The walls of our home, the home that Alex and I had built together, suddenly felt like they were closing in on me. A sense of dread settled in the pit of my stomach as I realized the magnitude of what had just occurred. A million dollars, my inheritance, my father's legacy, had been stolen from right under my nose. In that moment, it became crystal clear. The fairy tale was over and the nightmare had just begun. The man I had pledged to spend my life with had betrayed me in the worst possible way, and the woman who should have been my family was complicit in this treachery. My mind raced through the memories, the shared laughs, the promises of forever. Were they all lies? Was my entire marriage a farce, a cruel joke at my expense? The questions circled in my head like vultures over a carcass, picking apart what little faith I had left. As I waited for Alex to come home, a storm brewed within me, a storm of hurt, betrayal, and above all, a burning desire for revenge. By the time Alex walked through the door, I had played the scene out in my head a hundred times. Each mental rehearsal fueled my rage, my disbelief, my utter sense of betrayal. Yet when I looked into his eyes for a split second, the man I had fallen in love with peered back. It almost almost, made me second-guess what I knew to be true. Hey, how's your day been? Alex greeted casually, as if it was just another ordinary day. That was the breaking point. My composure snapped like a frail twig. How was my day? My voice quivered with a mixture of rage and incredulity. My day was a nightmare, Alex. Care to guess why? He frowned sensing the urgency but still playing ignorant. My finger pointed accusingly at him. One million dollars, Alex. One million dollars transferred to your mother's account without my consent. How could you... His reaction was maddeningly serene, almost rehearsed. Ah, ah, that. I was meaning to talk to you about it. I think my mother is better equipped to manage that money my eyes widened in disbelief. Better equipped. That money was my father's legacy to me, not some fun for your mother to manage as... He shrugged, the action so careless it made my skin crawl. My mom has more experience in these things. Don't you trust her? Trust her. Trust you. I was nearly shouting now, my voice echoing off the walls. I don't even know who you are anymore. He sighed, shaking his head. You're overreacting. This is for our future, Maria. Our future. I spat out the words as if they were poison. What future can there be when the foundation of our marriage is built on lies and betrayal? Alex looked taken aback for a moment, as if my outburst was a departure from some script only he knew. I thought you'd be more understanding, Maria. Understanding? 
You steal from me and then expect me to be understanding. I was trembling, a mixture of rage, disbelief, and a crushing sense of betrayal enveloping me like a dark cloud. It's not stealing if it's for family, he retorted, the mask finally slipping to reveal the stranger beneath. Family? My voice cracked, tears of fury and hurt welling up in my eyes. You and your mother have a twisted sense of what family means, Alex. The room went quiet, the tension thick enough to slice through. He studied my face, probably searching for a sign of the woman who had once looked at him with nothing but love and trust. But that woman was gone, replaced by someone hardened by betrayal and deceit. I think we need some space to figure things out, he finally said, breaking the silence. Figure things out, I echoed, my voice tinged with disdain. There's nothing left to figure out. You've shown your true colors, and so have I. Without another word, I walked past him, the finality of the moment weighing heavily on my heart. As I retreated to our... No... My bedroom, I knew that the life I had known was irrevocably shattered. But as one door closed, another opened, beckoning me towards a path I had never thought I'd tread. A path of revenge. As I began to collect my thoughts and belongings, a newfound clarity washed over me. I may have been deceived, wronged, betrayed, but I was far from broken. They had picked a fight with the wrong woman, and as the saying goes, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting shadows that danced on the walls of the home that was no longer ours, I made a vow. Alex and his mother would regret the day they decided to betray me. And so, the planning began. As the days crawled by after the confrontation, my emotions oscillated wildly. Anger, sadness, confusion. But they all settled into a cold, hard resolve. Revenge. This was no longer just about the money or the betrayal. It was about regaining control, about balancing the scales that had been so unfairly tipped against me. In the sleepless nights that followed, my mind concocted a variety of scenarios, each more elaborate than the last, but eventually I zeroed in on a plan that was as deviously simple as it was effective. First, I contacted a divorce lawyer citing irreconcilable differences and betrayal of trust. The lawyer, a middle-aged woman with an aura of stern competence, seemed sympathetic. Money disputes within a marriage can get messy, and it's worse when families involved, she told me as we sat in her office. Oh, you have no idea how messy it's going to get. I replied, a sly grin creeping onto my face. She looked at me for a moment, puzzled, but chose not to press further. Very well, we'll proceed as you wish. With the divorce papers filed, I moved on to the second part of my plan, making their lives as miserable as they'd made mine. Knowing Alex and his mother, Karen, I was aware that their one true love, other than money, was their home meticulously curated, impeccably clean, a sanctuary they took immense pride in. Well, it was time to turn their sanctuary into a living hell. Before moving out, I bought several cartons of eggs and waited until Alex was out, presumably visiting his mother to brief her on their victory. Alone in the house, I went from room to room hiding raw eggs in the most obscure places, behind bookshelves, inside curtain rods, under sofa cushions, where they'd be difficult to locate but would reek horrendously as they decomposed. As I was performing this act of petty yet deeply satisfying revenge, my phone buzzed. It was a text from Alex. Are you sure about the divorce? We can talk it over. The audacity of his message boiled my blood. Oh, we're way past talking, I muttered under my breath, placing another egg with renewed vigor. Satisfied with my domestic sabotage, I turned my attention to Karen. A midnight trip to her house was in order. Armed with bags full of garbage, rotting food, spoiled milk, and the like, I arrived at her pristine home under the cover of darkness. Wearing gloves and a hoodie to obscure my identity, I unleashed the waste through her open window with a grim sense of satisfaction. 
knowing that the act would befoul her sanctuary as she had befouled my life. Climbing back into my car, a sense of empowerment washed over me. For the first time in weeks, I felt in control, unburdened by the weight of their betrayal. The stage was set, the pieces in motion. As I drove back to what was once our home for the last time, to collect my belongings and leave behind the shambles of my married life, I couldn't help but think of a line from my father's favorite book. Before you embark on a journey of revenge, dig two graves. Little did Alex and Karen know, I had just finished digging theirs. Weeks turned into months. The papers were signed, the lawyers paid, and the facade of our perfect life was fully dismantled. I had moved into a modest but comfortable apartment, focusing on rebuilding the life that Alex and Karen had nearly ruined. Yet, in the quiet moments, I couldn't help but wonder about the effects of my revenge. Had they discovered the source of the foul odor permeating their homes? Did they suspect me? My curiosity was sated when a knock came at my door one evening. As I peered through the peephole, my heart surged with a vindictive joy. There they were, Alex and Karen, looking haggard and disheveled, a far cry from their former composed selves. I opened the door, masking my delight with a veneer of cool detachment. Well, this is a surprise. To what do I owe the pleasure? Alex shifted uncomfortably, avoiding my eyes. We, um, we wanted to talk to you. Talk? I feigned innocence. Couldn't we have done this over the phone? Karen, her eyes red and puffy as if she'd been crying, spoke up. Maria, can we come in? This isn't easy for us. Suppressing a smirk, I stepped aside and let them enter. Sure, make yourselves at home. As they took a seat, the tension was palpable. Alex finally broke the silence. Look, things have been really hard since you left. You don't say, I retorted, my voice dripping with sarcasm. Karen clenched her fists, clearly struggling to maintain her composure. Our homes. They're unbearable. We can't find the source of the smell, and we can't stand it any more. I feigned concern. That's really unfortunate. What do you suppose could be causing it? Alex looked desperate. We don't know, but it started after you. Left. We're wondering if you'd know anything about it. Are you accusing me of something? I asked, my eyes narrowing. Karen quickly interjected, No, no, we're not accusing you of anything. We're just... desperate and we thought maybe you'd know how to fix it. A wicked grin began to form on my face. Well, as it happens, I might know a thing or two about mysterious smells. They looked at me expectantly, hope flashing in their eyes for the first time in what must have been weeks. But it'll cost you, I added, savoring the moment. Alex clenched his jaw, visibly frustrated but defeated. One million dollars. I stated flatly. Their eyes widened in disbelief. Karen stammered, you can't be serious. As a heart attack, I replied. After a tense pause, Alex finally spoke, his voice tinged with resignation. Fine, you'll have your money. Within days, the money was back in my account, a symbolic and actual reclaiming of my power and agency. I then told them about the eggs and the garbage, reveling in the shock and horror that washed over their faces. As they left my apartment, faces flushed and spirits crushed, I felt no pity. They had invited this misery upon themselves. My father's legacy was returned, and with it, a newfound sense of justice and equilibrium. My phone buzzed. It was a message from my lawyer. Divorce finalized. You're free. Free. The word resonated with me, taking on a weight it had never held before. As I closed the door both literally and metaphorically, on that chapter of my life, I knew that I had come out on top, scarred but triumphant. After all, revenge isn't always served cold. Sometimes it's rotten and stinking, just like the people who compel us to seek it in the first place. Life went on, as it always does. 
With the divorce behind me and the reclaimed money safely in a new account, I focused on healing and moving forward. My job kept me busy, and my newfound independence was both invigorating and a little daunting. However, there was one more loose thread to tie up. The final unveiling of the truth behind my revenge. About a year after the divorce was finalized, I received an invitation to a family reunion. I hesitated initially, knowing full well that Alex and Karen would be there, but then it hit me. What better venue to reveal the truth? It would be the final touch, the piece de resistance, to my intricate tapestry of revenge. Walking into the reunion hall felt like stepping into another life, one filled with forgotten relatives and feigned cordialities. Nods were exchanged, cheeks were air, kissed and the atmosphere brimmed with a tension that was almost palpable. When my eyes finally met those of Alex and Karen, a perverse thrill ran through me. They looked better than they had that desperate evening at my doorstep, but the strain around their eyes couldn't be concealed. Maria, you look well, Alex ventured with a faltering smile. I could say the same for you, I replied, my voice devoid of warmth. Karen chimed in, her voice shaky. It's been a while. Better than ever, actually, I retorted. Just then, the microphone squealed to life. An uncle, tipsy and jovial, announced that it was time for the family to share some big news. This was my moment. My heart pounded as I walked up to the microphone, the crowd's eyes turning to focus on me. Good evening, everyone, I began, my voice surprisingly steady. I know it's customary to share joyful news at gatherings like this, but sometimes the truth is more important. I paused for effect, letting the words sink in. A year ago I divorced Alex, as some of you might know. What you don't know is why. Alex's eyes widened, realizing what was about to unfold. You see, I continued, I didn't just lose a husband. I lost one million dollars. The inheritance from my late father, money that was stolen and transferred to Karen's account without my consent, without my knowledge. Gasps filled the room. Family members exchanged incredulous glances, their eyes darting between me, Alex, and Karen. In the end, they returned the money because they couldn't live with the stench, both literal and metaphorical, that plagued their lives. I ensured that I said locking eyes with Karen, then Alex. Karen looked defeated, humiliated. Alex was frozen, his face pale. So let this be a cautionary tale, I concluded. Family is supposed to be a haven of trust and love, but sometimes it's the breeding ground for betrayal and deceit. I set down the microphone and walked out of the hall, not waiting for reactions or questions. The air outside felt crisp, the night sky stretching above me like a canvas of infinite possibilities. My phone buzzed. It was a message from my best friend, Sarah, who had been watching the live stream of the family reunion. You're a legend, she texted. I smiled. Revenge, they say, is a dish best served cold. But in my case, it was a dish served publicly, amid a crowd of witnesses, under the harsh spotlight of undeniable truth.